I'm so sick here. I I want to try to try to expose what's happening to us zebras here. If you don't know what a zebra is, um it's a phrase coined by the concept. I'm not sure who the concept was coined by. I I don't think I have the concept right, but this is the way I perceive it to be. It's sort of like a message to doctors saying, um, I know I perceive it wrong, but this is the way I think it it is. If a doctor a doctor hears hoof 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 prints. <laughs> um, hoofs coming in the distance don't assume it's a horse. It could be something rare. It could be a zebra. That's the way I perceive it. I think I've got it wrong, but I, I'm sticking to that. Um, and uh, a zebra would be a person, I think, the core illness. There's several umbrellas of conditions that collectively are often seen together. Conditions that are often seen together are called co comorbids. So I think this would be the Ehrlos-Danlos syndrome umbrella and then all the comorbids under that. So I'm sure I will forget half of the comorbids, but um, the main disease would be uh, Ehrlos-Danlos syndrome, and then dysautonomia, POTS, fibromyalgia, Chiari malformation, CCI, scoliosis, kyphosis, um, Uh, mass cell activation syndrome, on and on. So for myself, uh, confirmed uh, Chiari malformation, Ehrlos-Danlos syndrome, uh, scoliosis. Now, the only thing, I, I had a drug injury and the only thing I knew about prior to being pulled off, being weaned off a benzodiazepine uh, drug, uh, anti-anxiety drug too quickly. The only thing I had prior to that that I knew about was Chiari malformation, but they never told me what it was about and never explained anything to me and just sent me on my way, told me it was nothing. Now, after the benzo injury, two years ago, I've been diagnosed with Ehrlos-Danlos syndrome, uh, severe sleep apnea, uh, scoliosis, degenerative disc disease, mast cell activation syndrome, uh, mm, gosh, I wish I had a list, uh, fibromyalgia, ME, and chronic fatigue, fatigue syndrome. I should clarify because it does matter who diagnosed you and people question that and lots of people think they have conditions um, and, and might not. Um, so I want to clarify that because it does matter. Sometimes we think we can have stuff and don't, don't have it. Um, I have a, also acute, life-threatening uh, insomnia. Sorry, I'm I'm only sleeping one to two hours a night, and my mind is all over the place. I'm horrifically medically traumatized, um, and I want to do some videos on that the the medical trauma that us zebras endure. So. Um, So a neurosurgeon diagnosed uh, my Chiari malformation. A rheumatologist diagnosed, and and these diagnosed. I want to also be I'll also explain. Um, 
when you, I'm in Canada and it's not easy to get certain diagnosis. Uh, and sometimes you'll see numerous uh, specialists until you get a diagnosis. And um, often you'll see a specialist, they won't even know what some of these conditions are. And, uh, and often if you're not educated about this and you go to a rheumatologist, you ask if you have EDS, they say no. They ask you what it is. They say, no, you don't have it. And, um, and then if, unless you know to press your family doctor for more referrals and it took three, three rheumatologists before I even found one that knew what Ehrlich-Danlos syndrome is. So, um, so none of these, you know, a lot of these diagnoses didn't come easily. So, uh, Carrie malformation was diagnosed with by a neurosurgeon. He only wanted to hear he about headaches. He didn't want to hear about any other symptoms at all. Um, EDS diagnosed with a rheumatologist. Uh, scoliosis and um, degenerative disc disease uh, by a chiropractor and a neurologist confirmed. Uh, CCI has not been formally diagnosed. There is no one in Canada that can diagnose. The neurologist said, yes, I likely have it because I have EDS. Um, what else? Uh, ME and chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, one of the top uh, integrative um, integrative MDs here said, I likely have it. And it likely started with um, having mononucleosis at 15 years old. And... Uh, What else? Uh, mast cell activation syndrome, he said, um, I have that. And there's, you know, definitive tests for mast cell activation disorder, but not for mast cell activation syndrome. Um, I suffer terribly from that and avoid food and react all the time. It, that got much, much worse with, well, everything got worse with benzodiazepine withdrawal that seemed to bring, exasperate and bring all these disorders and illnesses out to the forefront. Um, I would have, uh, a couple months ago, I would have qualified to be diagnosed for POTS, but the internist refused to do a tilt table test i was doing uh the uh you know the heart rate test at home laying down and then quick then quickly standing up and it was over uh, an increase of over 30 heartbeats per per whatever is it per minute i don't know and uh, i would have qualified for pots months ago but i think that has resolved itself uh, severe apnea from the benzo injury. Um, that's gotten better with CPAP. Uh, what remains uh, just, you know, unbearable insomnia. And I'm sleeping one to two hours a night only. No ability to nap. No drugs will keep me asleep. I will get respiratory issues from the drugs. Um, my breathing becomes too shallow and weak. Uh, at times, even without the... Well, I'm, I'm no longer on any medications except thyroid. I can't really take any drugs or respiratory depressants because my... Um, my heart rate is too slow at times, and at times I'm only breathing four or five times a minute. Um, I think the 
drug injury, the benzo injury caused dysautonomia to some degree, uh, dysfunction of the autonomic nervous system, um, It's difficult, you know, it's difficult talking in the zebra community and the EDS community because most people can take these drugs without issues. And I can't take opioids or any uh, painkillers that slow breathing down. I can't take anti-anxiety drugs. Uh, I can't, you know, take anything, really. Um... So lots of people think, you know, lots of people have a lot of pharmaceuticals and I can't, I can't do anything. Uh, my body's too weak and my breathing is too slow at night and I have apnea and I'm just, it's such a risk for me. So at this point, I've been sleeping one to two hours for almost three years. I feel like I can't go on a whole lot longer. I can't take any pharmaceuticals to sleep. Uh, I would if I was in a protected environment, maybe, and someone was making sure I was okay. And if my, you know, at times I'm stopping breathing even with the CPAP. So, and I, you know, I'm by myself. So it's, it's a risk. And I know some of us with Carrie, you know, die in our sleep. So, um, so I wanted to do some videos of, of the profound medical PTSD that some of us have, the abuse that we encounter in our medical system, the dismissiveness, the patient profiling, how difficult it is to get care. Um, I have an appointment tomorrow, and I just I just read a, a woman's post. She's got an appointment coming up, and just the fear and from, you know, you have such a history of medical trauma and the fear of how quickly things can go south in a, in an appointment and you know you can have like a 10 conditions and they're telling you you're fine and nothing's wrong and then you're reading scathing reports about you and things can go go south so quickly in appointments and She's asking how to try to avoid that. Gosh, I've got an appointment tomorrow. I'm I'm just beside myself. I'm just traumatized, and I I mean serious medical PTSD. I don't I don't even want to go. I'm terrified. Um, the myth, you know, the misdiagnosing. It's always they revert back that you're you're crazy, you're batshit crazy. It's psychological. Gosh, I don't know how to deal with any of it anymore. The stuff I've seen written about me is just un it's just terrifying and heartbreaking. Um, I have an appointment with a respirologist tomorrow, and I'm just... Um, there's something wrong with my breathing when I sleep. Uh, I went through just such horror and abuse with the apnea, trying to get help. And I was refused respiratory care for a year and a half, refused follow-up CPAP, refused um, sleep, follow-up sleep care, sleep study. Now, this is my one shot, and I it, it's so difficult, and these doctors are reading horrific reports about you, and you have to pray that this person might have 
might be able to look at a situation with fresh eyes and have discernment. And most of them don't. And nine out of 10 will even refuse your referral, refuse to even see you or talk to you based on your previous appointments. I was stopping breathing 54 times an hour and I was dismissed and patient profiled and had a CPAP machine tossed at me and I was refused care. Um, you know, and then if you talk about it, you're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to, there's going to be a price to pay. And there's got to be a way for us to be, to get the help we need and be respected and not be continually patient profiled as mentally ill and dismissed and, you know, scathing reports written about us. It's, it's so insane. You're ill and you're reaching out for help and you're going to be punished because because we, I don't, I don't know why. I don't understand any of this. I think the root cause is we don't have people who can discern what's happening to us. We don't have doctors that are educated about these diseases and all the comorbids. We don't have, I don't think we have the spine people here. I'm begging and screaming for help for my spine to be looked at, for my neck to be sp looked at. My neck and spine hurts. Um, there's nobody qualified here to diagnose anything, to even do an assessment. Uh, and I can't get to the States. I don't have the money. I don't have the resources. I can't even get to Walmart. Been to Walmart once in two years, over two years. And then... And then the problem, the big, big problem here is finding out too late that that we don't have the help. We're discovering too late what, what might actually be happening to us. My unbearable acute uh, insomnia has been misdiagnosed. I'm al almost been misdiagnosed into my grave here. And... You know, it's been misdiagnosed as, you know, mental illness, anxiety, et cetera. And I, I've i known it wasn't for years. It's either the Chiari malformation pressing on the brainstem or maybe CCI pressing on the brainstem. I'm going to, I'm sleeping like this with a cervical collar and also holding my head up with my hand. I'm sleeping one to two hours a night. And that was confirmed in the sleep lab. And I'm still being dismissed. I was stopping breathing 54 times an hour. And acute insomnia and suicidal. And I, and I saw an ENT surgeon for an emergency appointment three weeks ago. And I'm reading... I just got the report. I'm reading that this guy says he can see no reports of me having severe apnea. This is how we're treated. And I don't have a fax machine. I don't, my photocopier broke. Unless you have people advocating for you and fighting for you. What's happening here is incredible. It's incredible. And it's all covered up with layer upon layer of, you know, that I have no no credibility whatsoever. I know most, a lot of zebras out there will, will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a living nightmare. I'm in Canada. I don't. I don't think it's possible for me to get help.